Fan bam, what's going on? Uh, it's been a minute since I made a video like this. Um, but I wanted to talk to y'all about, you know, how my Christian faith fell apart. Um, and before I kind of get into all that, I want to give you guys a little background about, you know, how my faith kind of came because it's something I never really talked about. You guys know in the beginning of this channel, I will always talk about God, about what he was doing in my life, how I was always seeking him. And I completely got away from all that because I took a step away and a big step away where I was like, I don't want to believe any of this. And I'm walking away from it because I asked myself some hard questions that I've always kind of had since a young uh, age. And I finally asked them and I got some answers. Um, so I guess I want to give a little background about, you know, kind of like where my Christian faith came from. So I was never raised in church. We did like the typical thing, uh, or at least where I'm from was where we went to church um, on Easter. We did stuff on Christmas and that was really it. You know, my mom and dad were not raised in church. My mom and dad had me really young. But I remember being a young boy, being out in the grass and looking up at the sky and having my feet in the grass and like seeing like bugs and birds and all kind of stuff. And I always knew that there was something bigger. I always knew that there was like this bigger entity, which, you know, I learned there was a word for this entity and it was called God. And I remember I kind of got around like 13 or 14 years old and I had a friend who was my best friend on my Pop Warner team. And we would go to church every Sunday because I always went to his house every weekend and his mom would take us to church. And I remember like going to church and it was a Baptist church. It was a, you know, predominantly black church. And it was the first time I saw people like catching the Holy Ghost and like crying and falling to the ground. And it was all kind of like really bizarre to me because it was something I never really felt like I could relate to. But the more I start going, the more I felt like I needed to have these things to be able to relate to God because whether they were teach teaching in church, it was almost like you kind of needed that. And that kind of steered me away a little bit at that age. But then this character came to me and his name was Jesus. And when I kind of learned about who Jesus was, to me, it was like, oh, he was a person who came down, who was sent by God, who came to do the work that we couldn't do to like go to heaven is how the church was teaching me and this kind of and finally in my kind of my life this is where fear kind of got instilled in me I'm like oh like you got to kind of do something to kind of get to heaven uh this place called heaven that i didn't even know about at that young age when i was like you know playing in the grass and knew there was a god and so i started to like try to learn about who jesus was i tried to like read and understand what he did and it was all very difficult for me because it all seemed very impossible. <laughs> like the stuff that he was doing just seemed impossible. So I kind of fast forward into high school and this is where, you know, I, my mom and dad just got a divorce and I was moving my mom uh, a few hours away from uh, LA where I'm from. And this is where I was kind of really by myself without my dad. And I'm the oldest of my siblings and I was always watching my younger brother, my younger sister. And this is where I didn't really have my dad anymore, so this is where I really kind of like, really kind of diving into my faith to understand what this was. And I still kind of really got no answers. I would try to read the Bible, I would try to pray, but it was it all seemed very empty to me. And the feeling that I had as a kid, when I would feel God's presence in the grass and stuff, kind of started to go away because I felt like there was this way to do this. And if I didn't do this right, then I wouldn't get into heaven or wherever this place may be that the church was teaching me when I was 13 to 14 years old, going to the church with my friend. So it was around my sophomore year in high school. Um, I moved away with my mom to go live with my dad in a small town called Bombay Beach. And I would start going to a Catholic church because my high school coach was a Mexican and he went to Catholic church and I would go there with him. And when I went to this Catholic church, it was one service where it was like, if you want to give your heart to, you know, to Jesus, then like, you know, come up to the altar. And I couldn't help myself. I'm like hysterically just like crying. I'm like bawling and I went up there. And this is the first time I really felt like this is much bigger than I ever had thought. It was this, it was a feeling that I felt when I was a kid um, playing in the grass, but it was like 10 times more like elevated. So this is where I kind of like really started to put God in my life with like football. And like I started to put God first in my life with everything that I was doing, trying to stop swearing and all this stuff. So fast forward, I get to college, and when I get to college, um, this is where, you know, I started going to Bible study. I started going to, um, you know, men's group on my team. And this is where things really got confusing because I got into college 
and I will meet with these guys who are like me, who are like talking about God and stuff in this room, but I knew what all that we were doing, including myself outside of this room, coming into Bible study. So all these different ideas and stuff came into my mind. And then I started to get introduced to like the history of America. And I started learning about slavery and I started to realize that like Christianity supposedly came from, you know, white people or whatever. And it was brought over here and taught to black folks. And this really stunned me when I saw this movie called 12 Years a Slave. Now, when I saw 12 Years a Slave in the movie, there was a, a part, there was a scene where the slave owner using the Bible to justify why he was having slaves and why he was beating the slaves. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Did you hear that? Stripes. That nigga that don't obey his Lord, that's his master, do you see? That there nigga shall be beaten with many stripes. Um, that was really difficult for me to deal with because then I started to question, like, where did this even come from? So I finally get into the NFL, and then this is where everything kind of comes crashing and burning because I realized that that feeling that I had as a kid when I was um, playing in the grass completely got washed away because I started to put routine into this thing that wasn't really a feeling anymore. It was more so like something that I had to do to get to this place called heaven or to be looked at. And a lot of the times for me, I played football. So for me, I felt like I was performing for this guy named Jesus to for him to like kind of like me to get into this place where I always felt this God. So then for a, the span of like, like four years, I started to just like be in routine, read, pray, all this stuff. And it just felt like a routine. It didn't feel the same, but I felt like it was working, but I've come to find out that it really wasn't for me. Um, so this is where everything really started to change for me. And it was this last year when uh, George Floyd was killed. And it brought up all those deep fears of about like where Christianity came from and why it just happened to black people and all this stuff. And that's when I decided to walk away from God because I started to realize that if my faith is so strong, then I should be able to test it to see how strong it really is. I don't wanna walk and live this fake faith without me really trying to see if it's real by asking these questions that I've had for a long time since I was introduced to Jesus and church and stuff like that. So I started to experiment the past year. I like meditated, I tried reading other books, um, anytime a Christian song came in, anytime I felt the need to pray, I stopped. I didn't do any of it because I wanted to see if this faith was really mine. I wanted to see if everything that I felt as a kid was really real. And what I learned in my journey is that like through meditating, through reading other books, to learn about gurus in India, to learn about mystics and all this stuff, that no matter what I did, no matter what I said, no matter how much I try to ignore God, it can never, ever leave me. And I tried so hard to let it go. I tried so hard to not let God be, well, let Jesus be this, the narrative of like what I was feeling. And no matter what I did, it always came back. And I started to realize throughout my life, all these different things that had happened that if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for one person or one decision or one left turn or one, opportunity that my life would be completely different and I always knew that co coincidences weren't real to me I always thought that coincidences are nothing but God being anonymous to you and I've always known that and I think for me the way that I got back into my faith how I made my faith strong was really questioning it and not being afraid to ask the questions that I think all of us really want to ask you know when I used to sit up and pray and ask God for this and do God for that it was either out of fear it was either out of obligation or it was either because I really didn't thought, I thought I just had to. And now that I'm back strong in my faith, I walked back a few months ago when I pray and when I think about God and I read the Bible, it's fully mine now. It's 100% mine because I, t I tested it. And I'm not going out here telling people to test their faith. I'm not telling them to do anything. I think one of the biggest fears that I have is complacency. And I think when it comes to my faith, 
I don't want to be running on false faith my entire life. Not because I'm afraid not to go to heaven, not because of anything like that, but more so because if I love God the way that I speak, then I want to make sure that I am walking in that way because I want to and I believe it. Not out of obligation from somebody else, not out of obligation from a church, from a pastor, from a song, from anything. I wanted to be. I wanted it to be mine. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know if it was gonna be mine. I thought I was gonna completely like walk away and like find my own thing. Because when it comes to meditating or reading a book or exercising, these are all tangible things that we can do. And the one thing that's hard about faith is that you have to rely on God in a lot of things. And I think as I'm as, as I'm learning more and more, that I think we look at like faith almost as, almost like it's blind or like it's not there. And I'm still trying to figure the, the definition of what that means for me because I understand it in my heart and in my head, but I can't explain it in words just yet. And it was important for me to make this video because I'm about to start back getting into my groove of making videos. I'm the healthiest that I've ever been mentally, physically, and definitely spiritually. Uh, my family's doing really well. The girls are healthy. Me and Charlotte's marriage is doing really well. And it's all because I really put my faith back in God and because it's mine. I remember I used to sit up and read Proverbs and I used to read devotionals and stuff about like being a better husband and a better dad and I would read it and then two minutes later I get up and I'm doing the same thing that I was doing. Whereas now when I read it, I'm reading it because I, because it's mine, you know, and I, and I really feel it in my heart. I really feel God's presence and Him changing my heart and my mind, you know what I mean? And it's all because I really, really tried to leave and he didn't let me. And I think that's a testimony, you know, that God is always around. He's always here, whether you're testing him or you're not testing him. And when I say test, I'm not talking about like, don't go out there and like do something crazy and be like, oh yeah, I'm testing God. I ain't talking about that. Like that, <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here. But when I say testing, I'm talking about like really asking those questions, like really asking the questions that you have. Asking close friends, asking your pastor, asking your wife, your husband, and getting to the conversation. Cause for me, that is what made my faith strong. And most importantly, that's what made my faith mine. I'm now praying with my kids. I've never really done that before. I'm praying with, I'm praying with Charlotte. And, and I'm praying, most importantly, I'm praying with God. Like, I feel like I'm having a conversation with Him. Now when I speak, it's not like me getting on my knees and just saying, like, our Father who I in heaven, hallowed be our name. I'm actually taking walks and I'm just speaking. Like, God is my, like, my friend, you know? And there's this unbelievable connection that I've had and it's 10 times more strong than what I thought, um, than, than, it, when I, than what I experienced as a kid playing in the grass. Um, that feeling that I had when I was a kid playing in the grass is back, but also all those years of me trying to get closer to God, that discipline that I, that discipline that I learned, that um, structure that I learned, that asking questions, the being aware to who I'm listening to and the information that I'm taking in, it all came together full circle now because I feel like that my relationship with God is mine. And I think that's the most important thing that I've gotten out of this entire journey. Um, you know, I still have questions about the slavery. I still have the feeling of all like, you know, the thing with George Floyd and like black people. I still have the questions about, you know, other religions. But as far as like getting to heaven, no, I don't think about that anymore. Because this connection that I have is unexplainable and nobody really can take that away from me. And it's more than about me being just being a good person. I feel like I'm living out, I really don't like saying this word, but like I'm really li living out my purpose because I'm doing it because it's mine and I know that it's real and nobody can take that away from me. So yeah, my Christian faith fell apart. Now it's back and I'm happy. So uh, that's my testimony, fam, bam. It's been a while since I've done this and um, I thought it was important before I kind of got back into the groove of everything. So if you're still here watching, you're a real one. If you have any questions, you can hit me up on Instagram or whatever the case may be. And uh, yeah, until next time and I'll see you guys on the next one.